in this lab, we're interested in two approaches to studying the structure and function of the nervous system of vertebrate animals. Vertebrate animals, which include amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, and most importantly, fish, which is the group that we study. And they are the largest group of living vertebrates. And they are wonderful animals to ask functional questions about how the nervous system underlies naturally occurring behaviors. And the behavior we mainly study is sound production or vocalization, or you might refer to it as acoustic communication. So that's the production of sound and the detection of sound, and as it's produced for us in a social context. Our fish that we study are known as, broadly known as toad fishes, and those include groups of fishes that are commonly referred to as either toadfish or midshipman fish. And the reason why I chose them to study uh, almost 25 years ago now is that their entire lives revolve around making sound and hearing sound. And they are marine fish, and they live in an interesting environment, many of them. They live in shallow water, uh, which is a complex acoustic environment. But in the shallow water, uh, what these animals do is they build nests under rocky shelters, or they might be under shells and males sing a song to attract females to their nest. And over the years, what we have been able to do is to identify the networks of neurons in their brain that underlie both the production of that sound and its detection. And so to do that, we take a multidisciplinary approach, which includes uh, neurophysiology, neuroanatomy, uh, molecular biology, and needless to say, all of those questions are always asked in the context of the naturally occurring behaviors. We use our animals as models both for asking questions in a biomedical context because, in fact, the brain of fishes is highly conserved uh, um, con compared to other vertebrates. In other words, uh, among all vertebrates, you find that major pathways in the nervous system, whether they're sensory or motor, share many similarities. And one could make the argument that fishes represent the ancestral state for many of those systems, and in many ways, the simplest state. Uh, I think it's fair to say probably sound production among fishes is the simplest example of how an animal produces sound and uses sound in a social context among all vertebrate animals. But at the same time, the neurons that are involved in producing those behaviors and hearing those behaviors are similar in their most fundamental attributes across all vertebrate animals. And so there's, there's, a, there's a common evolutionary context here that allows us to ask uh, questions in a biomedical context, and yet we know that the, the, the answers to those questions will have application to all groups of vertebrates, including humans.